Today, Steve and I were watching videos about crabs. Like these. Then, of course, we went into the comments section where we stumbled across some interesting comments. I'll read them now. I've never been so angry with crabs, not until now. Fear not, little turtle. We dine on crab legs all the time in your name. Imagine being a little ass crab just trying to make it when you see food running by and snatch it to feed your children, and the next thing you know, you're the most hated crustacean on the internet. There are actually quite a lot of comments like that. This begs the question, why did the crabs get so much hate? This is Christmas Island, a place where terrible things happen. This small plot of land with an area of just 52 square miles is home to two endangered species of sea turtles, green turtles and hawksbill turtles, who live together with more than 20 species of crabs. But these neighbors don't exactly get along. As soon as the baby turtles hatch from eggs, they immediately rush to the water. At this time, they're the most vulnerable. Crabs hide in the sand to attack anyone who crawls past them. Their huge pinchers simply don't leave the turtles any chance. They end up as a snack for crabs who often eat their prey alive, having a thing for the eyeballs. Now I'm starting to see why the internet reacts to them this way. But the worst thing is that this happens not only on Christmas Island. Looks like crabs all around the world are ready to attack baby turtles because they're easy prey. And even if the babies reach the water, it does not mean they're safe. The tidal waves push the turtles back to the shore where, well, crabs are happy to meet them. Though this meeting will be their last. There are even some statistics that say ghost crabs are recognized as the major predators of sea turtle eggs around the world. True, there isn't a lot of exact data on that, but we can make certain conclusions from the fact that there's a heavy presence of ghost crabs on the beaches where turtles nest, well, and from their taste preferences as well. But let's face the obvious. Being a newborn turtle is basically like choosing the hardest level in the game and skipping the tutorial. Your mom abandons you to your fate, you first hatch from the egg without any help, then dig yourself out of the sand and crawl towards the brightest spot, assuming it's the light reflected off the sea. Though it could be some kind of lantern on the coast, at best you'll simply get lost, at worst you'll end up as dinner for a cat, a crab, or a seagull. The number of predators happy to eat a little turtle is simply huge, and there are also enough of them in the sea. By some estimates, only 1% of turtles make it to adulthood. But if this does happen, the lucky ones can swim in the seas for more than a century. Does this mean that crabs leave turtles alone when they grow up? Ha! Crabs are not like that. True, they're no longer interested in turtle eyeballs. In any case, that's not a priority. Plains Minutus crabs are too small to travel long distances on their own, but apparently they want to travel anyway, so they have to get creative. Crabs attach themselves to logs, ship holes, plastic junk, or turtles. However, swimming alone is not enough. Crabs are looking for a secluded place where they can find a mate and start breeding. In case of turtles, it's their butt, rather a small area between the turtle's tail and its shell. Usually this space is perfect for a couple of crabs. So we can say that turtles promote monogamy among crabs. Without turtles, they like to change partners. These tiny crabs are quite peaceful. If you want to see a real monster, you should check out the blue crab. No animal can match its aggressiveness. In any case, this is what people who often encounter blue crabs say. Actually, these crabs aren't aggressive towards humans. They'd rather hide when they're close, but as soon as they get into the net, find themselves in a bucket or in a boat, they activate destroy everything in the way mode. Each pinch not only hurts, but also damages and infects the skin. Their claws are pointed, so they work like bacterial injections. People who deal with blue crabs try to keep some sort of antibiotic at hand. And of course, such attacks leave scars on the skin. The claws of blue crabs are designed like damn sharp wire cutters. However, don't think that blue crabs only take out their aggression on people who pull them out of the water. They're just as willing to attack their brethren. For example, fiddler crabs. Blue crabs eat them. I'm serious. These cunning crustaceans found a way to hunt at low tide. Although they don't usually hunt on land, they dig down into the mud, creating shallow, water-filled pools and lie in wait. Any unsuspecting fiddler crabs looking for food after low tide and getting too close risk being ambushed. If that happens, they become dinner. And this isn't even the only hunting strategy we know of. Blue crabs have been known to lunge out of the water, 
grabbing fiddler crabs and dragging them to dismember and eat them later. Do you know what scientists say when they put a dead crustacean in an aquarium with its living brethren? Bon appetit! On the one hand, this is nothing new. Many animals don't mind eating the dead members of their own species and don't exactly feel any shame. After all, a dead animal will hardly need, for example, its limb, and you can't say no to a snack in the wild. But usually, if there's a dead creature of your species around, the one who killed it must be somewhere nearby too. So cannibalism goes hand in hand with maximum caution. But not when it comes to certain hermit crabs. Scientists did some experiments and found out that as soon as the remains of their dead relative appear in the water next to hermit crabs, keep in mind, they smell of death, hermit crabs immediately begin to look for the source of this smell. Instead of hiding to avoid a predator nearby, these guys are almost always enthusiastically looking for the corpses of other hermit crabs and happily eat them. Well, such behavior doesn't mean we have vicious cannibals here. Most likely, it's caused by the lifestyle of hermit crabs and their constant struggle for shells. They die much more often fighting each other than predators, which means that the one who smells of death won't put up much of a fight. Maybe there's even a chance to get a new house for free. But you know what kind of creature really looks like it crawled out of someone's nightmare? A coconut crab. First, this crustacean is gigantic. It weighs up to 9 pounds and has a leg span of up to 3 feet. It's also a very strong animal, capable of lifting objects the weight of a 10-year-old kid. Honestly, if a creature like this charged at me, I'd scream and climb a tree. Not that it'd help, though, because coconut crabs are good at climbing. There are cases where they climb trees to get into birds' nests. No, not even to eat eggs. They preyed on the birds. A coconut crab once broke a bird's wing, pushed it out of the nest, then got down, broke the second wing, and after that, other coconut crabs joined the party and, well, it was like a scene from a horror movie. Coconut crabs prey on large birds, rats, and members of their own species because, well, why not? They attack in the dark and grab unsuspecting prey when it gets too close. There are records of coconut crabs ambushing chickens and even kittens. The internet won't ever forgive them for that. And given that this species can live up to 60 years, can you imagine how many different creatures become its prey? And don't forget how powerful the coconut crab's pinchers are. They often use them to crack coconuts and feast on the coconut meat. But have you tried cracking a coconut without any tools? It's actually hard. Scientists estimated that the pinchers of an average coconut crab could generate a force of just over 1,765 newtons. For reference, the maximum human bite force is between 1,100 and 1,300 newtons. Yes, the difference seems to be small, but the coconut crab's strength increases with its size. When the animal reaches its maximum weight of 9 pounds, the strength of its pinchers reaches 3,300 newtons. That's a lot. And the worst thing is that the coconut crabs are perhaps the reason why we don't know anything about the fate of Amelia Earhart. She was the first female pilot to fly across the Atlantic Ocean, wrote a bunch of books, and was generally considered very famous. Earhart went missing while trying to fly around the world, and the circumstances of her death are still unknown. Most likely, she simply drowned in the Pacific Ocean. But there's another quite creepy theory. Back in 1940, researchers discovered a skeletal fragment on Niku Maruru Island that matched the description of Amelia Earhart. Perhaps she or her dead body ended up on this island. Whatever it was, she could have been discovered by coconut crabs who find their prey by smell, and then, well, then they ate her. To test this theory, researchers conducted an experiment on a pig carcass back in 2007, and coconut crabs consumed its flesh very quickly. They even pulled the bones apart, so Earhart might have actually fallen prey to these creatures. Now imagine what would happen if the coconut crabs were armed. Kyle King was camping on the uninhabited island of Komaka in Japan when around 2 a.m. he was awakened by a scratching sound near his tent. What the guy saw then was a little disturbing, because the coconut crab found a steak knife in his bag, grabbed it, and tried to escape. A coconut crab! with a knife! A steak knife! Am I the only one who finds this frightening? Seriously, we're all lucky this fellow was disarmed in time. 
Actually, the most likely reason is the smell. The knife was used to cut meat, and the coconut crab simply mistook it for a bone. I hope not a human one. Though we have to admit, coconut crabs actually like stealing stuff. On Christmas Island, one cunning crustacean stole a $4,000 camera from researchers while they were studying bats. Scientists admitted that coconut crabs often steal things like head torches or shoes if left unattended, but stealing the camera seems like crossing the line. And most importantly, it's entirely unclear what to do about it. It looks like scientists are ready to smear the equipment with hot sauce, but what if the coconut crabs like it? Yet the chances to encounter this species aren't so great to really worry about it, but from an ecological point of view, crabs cause real problems. Not so long ago, red king crabs were discovered near the Antarctic continental shelf, although this place used to be too chilly for them. But now the coastal waters warmed up and nothing prevents the crabs from settling in and spreading, devouring everything in their way. Climate change could also lead to the invasion of king crabs, which will permanently destroy the chilly ecosystem. This is really bad news for marine life, like clams, starfish, and other soft-bodied organisms. They're just not used to such predators, which means they'll end up as their dinner very quickly. Crabs are generally capable of becoming invasive animals and causing a lot of problems. For example, the European green crabs have it so good in New England, they were listed among the 100 world's worst alien invasive species. European green crabs multiply fast. They're damn voracious, aggressive to local species, tolerant of temperature changes. In short, these are not the kind of guests you'd like to accidentally bring into your territory. Marine biologists call European green crabs probably the most successful invasive species in North America. Each such crab can eat 40 mussels a day. And there are a lot of crabs, and if their number will grow, mussels will simply disappear. And other similar animals along with them. Cold winters used to keep the European green crab population in check, but global warming ruined everything again. It's simply impossible to get rid of crabs. No wonder they're called the cockroaches of the sea. People use a number of strategies to fight the European green crabs, mainly, of course, by catching and eating them. But one company, for example, decided that the cockroaches of the sea could be turned into good whiskey. I agree, that doesn't sound delicious, even if you forget about the crab's nickname, although connoisseurs of strong liquors say the drink is quite all right. Well, to eliminate any doubt that crabs and other crustaceans are both amazing and damn scary creatures, here's a fact. Cuttlefish deliberately mimic hermit crabs. Research conducted by Japan's University of Ryukyu revealed that pharaoh cuttlefish act like hermit crabs and also lighten areas of their skin to achieve a visual resemblance. And this is hardly a way to flatter crustaceans or adopt their style. Most likely, cuttlefish simply use this disguise in order to get closer to their prey. Scientists even estimated that the cuttlefish that mimicked hermit crabs caught twice as many fish compared to those who didn't. Though I think they do it only because the fish don't have internet. If they watched all those videos about crustaceans, they'd swim as far away as they could in a blink of an eye. See you later.